Hey everybody, happy Monday. Welcome to my channel. I am Renee from Tailspin Farm and today I am hopping on to talk about a technique in spinning. Um, we're going to talk about fractal spinning and this is just one of the ways that you can spin to get a very specific um, color pattern on your yarn. Um, that's simply what the fractal spinning means and essentially you're going to end up with a barber pole type yarn. Um, I actually <clears throat> spun um, my last month's uh, Crafty Housewife yarn braid into a fractal spun skein. Um, I have shown this on the bobbin but I just pulled it off um, my Knitty Knotty and this is what I ended up with um, when I fractal spun this. If you want to see what the braid looked like, uh, you can go to my Instagram page. I do have a picture of it, um, just the braid. And fractal spinning is done best when you have very um, distinguished color blocking patterns. Um, that doesn't mean it doesn't work. This one wasn't, this one was a bit um, not muddy, but this the colors were um, not as separated in this skein, but I think it still turned out beautiful. I love these colors together. And so that's something to think about when you're doing um, the fractal spinning is um, whether or not the fiber you're using has a good color pattern to separate. Um, I actually have my May Crafty Housewife yarn braid. Um, and this one has more of a, a color breaks in between. You can see um, all the way down the braid. And so I'm gonna show you how to prepare this and then how to spin it. Um, so this will be a couple parts. I'm going to um, flip the camera around here onto the table so that you can see how I separate this out. Essentially what we're gonna do is split it in half and there are many different ways you could choose to do this depending on what color you want to get or what color pattern you want to get. Um, I'm going to show you a real easy one, a real basic one, um, and that is splitting the braid in half and then um, keeping one half and then uh, for one bobbin and then the other half I split into, I think I split it into fours and I'll kind of show you what's going to happen. Um, I don't weigh out my fiber when I split it. I just eyeball it. Um, you guys know that I am very much an organic spinner um, and I'm okay with that. Um, some of you may want to split it even, split your your bobbins half and half down to the ounce even and that's fine too I just I don't I don't usually work that way <laughs> so I'm going to going to um, pause this and flip it around onto the table so that you could see me divide up the braid okay guys hopefully this is gonna work okay I'm going to undo my braid and then I'm going to just split it right into, half, into halves. Um, and so one of the halves of this braid is just going to be one bobbin. And I will actually show you how I'm going to spin that. So I start at an end and there's usually a good middle. And once you start, you're just going to pull. And it should Sometimes you might have to work through the, make sure it's more even. I can kind of tell by the thickness here that it's just about even right there. So we're going to do this all the way down. And again, if you wanted to be more um, particular with how much is on each side, you could go about um, weighing them at this point once they're separated and see how close you are. Um, and if you needed to, you could pull off a certain color that you needed. So one of these I'm going to, and my guess is these are really close. They're extremely close in ounce weights. Um, so one of them I'm going to put off to the side, and that will be my one bobbin. Now the idea with fractal spinning is as you spin, you're going to change colors depending on how thin or thick you're spinning. Um, and... So for, if I were just to spin this one, which I'm going to do with one of the bobbins, I'm going to spin this entire purple area first. And so I'm going to have quite a long um, 
section of purple and then it'll go to, to the the white with some of the purple in it and then it'll switch to a little bit more purple and then we'll go to the purple switching to the blue and then we hit the blue section and so with this I'm going to spin each color section um, with half the bobbin and spin this entire section so when you split your um, your second half into fours you're going to end up with smaller sections right so you're going to end up with four so a quarter of what your original purple was so we're going to pull one off and that's our first quarter and again if you wanted to split this into you could split it into sixth um, however you want to do it it'll work oops I'm sorry I keep bumping the camera too I apologize um, so you split it into a quarter and so what you're going to end up with is where on my one half I'm going to have all of this to spin into um, yarn on this side I only have a qu about a quarter of that to spin and so it's going to be a shorter section so where the first one's going to be a long section the quarters are going to be shorter sections and you're going to see that once you start plying um, plying it in together where the color switches are and again it's going to this um, this braid has definite color divisions you can see but there would be other depending on what um, color how they do the coloring on the braids or whatever you're spinning is what you're going to get so you may get um, if you had more distinguished or distinctive color separations you're going to get something totally different there too if that makes sense so I'm going to pull out these other three and then we'll hop onto the wheel and start spinning and I'll show you um, what that looks like on each of the bobbins. This is the most tedious part of it is just separating it out how you want it and then I just roll these smaller ones into little um, balls and it won't matter um, on this it won't matter which end you start with to spin on these sh short ones so and then this is the last one and this is the most like I said, tedious part of this whole thing is getting these all separated and then wound up. And, and then the last one. We will roll up. There. So we have four of one half and then the full half of the other. So let's jump on the wheel and see what these end up looking like. Okay, we've got my uh, braids here separated got the half of the braid here and then the half quartered here you can kind of see the color change already um, between this and these and so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the half and I'll show you how I spin I've got my spin illusion echo set up um, I've been enjoying this one a lot lately I've done a lot of spinning on her um, and so I'm just going to start at the end here. Um, you may want to draft out um, 
your yarn a little bit more, but I'm gonna kind of show you how I work through these color changes. This is just how I do it. Uh, you could do it any way that you feel comfortable. You could, um, again, draft this out a little bit more, but I'm gonna show you how I kind of work along the top of this color change down. So I'm going to just get it started here on an edge. There we go. And I am just going to pull. And hopefully you can see that. I'm working this camera angle is always hard to spin at because I can never tell. Hopefully you can see it all. So I am just kind of going back and forth along the edge of my half of the braid. And I'm working through that purple color first. Um, and then there's going to be this this gradual change to um, a white with some purple and blue in it. Again, different braids with more distinct color changes um, are going to be more noticeable doing this, doing the fractal spinning. And you might like that a little bit better too. But as you can see, I'm just working through, that's most of the purple gone. And then I'm going to grab... And these are going to be short color changes on this one because it is a shorter, um, the end here was a shorter color change. But once we get into the middle of this, you're going to see uh, like the yellow and stuff is going to be a longer, a longer one. So I'm going to pull. So that's most of the purple and white and now I'm shifting into the blue and again I'm just working across the top of this braid back and forth and that's how I kind of keep the color all together is by doing that and I am actually going to um, see if I can find let me see if I can find a longer color change section here for you to see what I'm talking about. Let's go into this end. This end has a longer um, purple section right here. That's going to be a little bit longer. And actually it's just going to mesh with, whoops, don't want to do that. Um, it's going to mesh with the purple that I've already done here. So I'm just extending that a little bit more. Again, it's hard to video these and see where you're, where you're at. So you can see I'm just pulling from the very tip. And if you're a newer spinner, you can um, draft this out a little bit more, like I said, if that makes it easier. But I'm essentially just going to work this tip end until I get to the white here. And as we get to the middle of this braid, there are some longer color sections that you will see. So I'm almost to the white white right here. So I'm gonna scoot into the purple a little bit more here. And this is uh, Cordale. And then it pretty much changes over. I'm just gonna grab these few purpley tips and then you're pretty much in the white completely. And if you can see on my bobbin, we're going to go from pretty much all purple there. And I'm going to move down to my next pin. There is a little bit of blue and purple in this white, so it's not a pure white. But there's definitely um, a color change there. And you're going to start seeing it 
let me stop it this time you're going to start seeing it right there where the lighter is coming through now And then there's going to be a little bit of pink in here. So basically that is how I do the larger end. And we're going to move into more blue and purple. Um, this one is going to get a little bit more muddled. But once we hit down here, you're going to see this color change here. And then especially the yellow section here, you will see... Um, so I'm going to pause this and get a little bit of this on here so that you can actually see my bobbin fill in that way. Okay guys, I've got a good section here um, done, spun up. I have pulled it through my bobbin um, pegs here as I went along with each color. You can kind of see the, the length of the purple part and then it switched to the blue and then kind of a, a yellow and blue mix and then I had mostly yellow and so those are the colors I'm back at um, I just went through a little bit of yellow and blue and I'm back at that big section of yellow which you, you will see even a, a larger portion of this um, these color variances these sections are also going to depend on how thick or thin you spin also um, I am I am thin, I'm not overly thin. Um, I am probably spinning, this is gonna end up being um, like a DK weight once I apply it together. So if you were to spin it thicker, then each of these sections is gonna be just a little bit smaller because you're taking more fiber, obviously. So that is the half of a skein. Now I'm gonna pop on another bobbin and I'm going to do um, our quarters to show you the difference in um, the lengths of the the colored um, divisions here. So hold on. Okay, I have another bobbin on. I apologize, I do not have any empty bobbins right now <laughs> because I'm spinning like crazy. So this has a bunch of Angora on it, um, which is fine. You're going to be able to see. I also wanted to show you real quick on the Spinolution wheels, um, which if you have any questions, please ask. I am a dealer um, and I can help you with any of that. But the awesome thing about these wheels is to change the bobbin, you pull, this is magnetic right here, you just give it a tug and it pulls off and then your bobbin comes off. So I can change these super fast. And then it clicks, you can hear the magnet grab. So just a quick note on the, the Spinolution wheels. Um, I'm just going to use my Angora here as my leader. So I have one of the four, <coughs> excuse me. I have one of the four um, that we separated. And so what you're gonna see here quickly is the colors, first of all, this is pre-drafted. So um, this is gonna be basically, the colors are gonna shift very quickly on this. And I'm gonna get just a little bit here done so you can see. But you can kind of see in my hand how quick. I've just passed the purple. And now into the bluish color that we went through. Um, and then back into a little bit of purple. So this isn't taking me nearly as long to get through these color changes. And then I'm into the white. But on the, on the half of the braid, I had to kind of work back and forth um, across the top of my uh, section here I'm just working the whole the whole braid and I'm getting into the white so I'm going to kind of shift this like I did the other one I'm going to move up a peg so that's most of the purple that um, I started with remember on the other bobbin it's quite um, quite a bit thicker so we'll move into the white and that's going to be gone quite quickly here too and we're going to go back into some blue and purple 
I'm going to keep spinning here to get to, and then I'll hold the two bobbins up in comparison. I'm going to get to the yellow section here again. But now I'm going through that light aqua color or teal color. There wasn't a lot of white here. And again, I'm spinning it the same, um, the same weight, the same as the other bobbin. I'm gonna hit some white section again here and a little bit of teal and yellow. So let me move this again. And then we're going to hit that yellow section and then I'll stop it and show you um, what this bobbin looks like compared to the other one. And these feel like they, the, the four divided feel like they spin up so much quicker just because they're already divided out for you and it just makes it easier to spin it's already drafted this would be like what pencil roving if you hear the term pencil roving that's kind of what this um, this would be like jump to peg there and now we're pretty heavy into the yellow section wasn't the best bobbin option you can see it even with my um, wheel going pretty quickly you can see the colors in there I'm coming back out of the yellow section here Let's see yeah so just to show you the color changes here and I apologize for the lighting, it is getting evening out, so I'm losing my daylight. But you can see um, these ones here are quite small compared to these ones in here. It took me a whole, um, the whole bobbin here to get to the yellow section, and here I'm already there with just a short little spinning time. So let me get these finished, and I will um, come back and show you both bobbins finished, and then we're going to apply them together and see what it looks like. Okay, guys, I am back, and it is actually a couple of days later. Um, I have finished spinning both my bobbins. Um, I used my Spinolution Echo to do them, and I have pulled out my Monarch um, to ply. So if you remember, I had the braid um, from Crafty Housewife Yarns. I split it down the middle, and then I capped the one half just the way it was, and then I took the other half and split it into quarters, so it was four. And this is what I ended up with. And hopefully, oh yeah, that's coming through pretty good. Um, so you can tell, I think, you can see the longer color variances on this one here compared to this one. The colors switch quicker when you have it split um, into more pieces. You're getting quicker breaks in your color. And so you can really tell on these bobbins, um, this is the one that's just the half spun straight just like it was, and then this is the separated one. So isn't that cool just to see that part of it? Now I'm gonna switch around. Um, and put them on my monarch and um, and spin them together and you will see uh, what that looks like once you put them ply them together so let me um, pause this and shift down and I'll give you a hint of what it's gonna look like finish it off and then I'll come back okay guys you can see I've got my lazy Kate 
um, hooked onto my monarch monarch here um, this is a super handy lazy cape because it does have legs on it if you wanted to pull this off and put it down below you could do that so just one of those um, cool things on the spinolution wheels and how they have it set up so I've got both bobbins up and <clears throat> I've actually got you can see I've got other yarn on here I am continuously <laughs> um, doing that but I don't have any, I'm working on a ton of stuff right now and I don't have any empty bobbins. So um, this is going to have to work. Uh, I think you can see one down here on the floor next to me that's full of Angora and I need to unload that also. Um, but let's spin this and um, the bobbin that's up, let's see, the one that's over here is the um, the quartered one and then my bobbin over here is the one that was just the half and so I am just going to apply it and you're going to see and I'm not sure how the colors are going to come through but if you look right in here you're going to see the this is, I'm working on um, a purple the purple part right here and it's going to be quite long and then this one back here is going to change quite quickly so let's see how long it takes us to change colors. Um, I love this wheel. This is actually the first Spin Illusion wheel I got a couple years ago and uh, fell in love with it. And so we've already got color change here. We're going to the teal. I'm going to move my peg here. And we still have quite a bit of purple on the other bobbin. So that's going to go a little bit here. As we shift from purple and yellow, it's going to shift to purple and teal. And I've got something caught here. Yep. <clears throat> Just a minute. I moved my peg and didn't pay attention to. Let's try that again. I didn't pay attention to all the uh, pegs being caught up. There we go. So now I've gone from purple and yellow to purple and teal, which is a beautiful color there. Excuse my hands. I've been out in the garden. I need a manicure terribly. But today I got into some nettles and my hand is just driving me crazy. So, the joys of gardening. And we're going to quickly change from sort of a teal green to the blue green color with this. I just want to go through a few colors here. I'm not going to video this whole thing. But I want you to see, and I'm still on purple um, with the other bobbin. And then I'll kind of give you a preview of what it's going to look like. And then I'll finish it off and show you the end result. Now we're going into sort of a light blue color on the one side. You've still got purple on the other. And that's where you get the, the colors changing. And then I've got purple coming up on the other side also. Let's pause that and see if you can see. That's what we're looking at. So I'm going to pause this and I'm going to finish out um, the bobbin and then we'll finish up the video. Okay guys, the bobbin is finished. This is what it ended up looking like. Um, I will, jig jog there, but I will pull this off and put it into a skein and take a picture of it, put it at the end of the video so you can actually see um, the full range of colors. Really turned out beautiful. Just a hint, um, I had mentioned while I was pulling apart the fiber that I don't measure. I am a 
fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl and so I just pull it apart and kind of eyeball it. Um, I did end up with one bobbin still with yarn on it or yeah with, with one um, strand of yarn on it. So it was uneven to some degree. Um, fortunately I did it with my last braid so I have about the same amount on this bobbin so I'm going to take these two and spin them together. Um, you typically end up with some crazy colors but a lot of times they uh, they kind of blend and I actually think these ones are going to work all right. So that's what I'm going to do with the two leftovers from my previous two skeins that I've done. Um, so just a tip you may want to as you're pulling apart your braids weigh them so that they're closer to even so you don't have any waste or have to do what I do. Um, so just a hint for today. Thank you for stopping by. If you don't already, would you please um, subscribe to my channel and click the like button if you enjoyed this video. If you have any um, recommendations for videos that you'd like to see me do, please put those in the comments below. You can follow me at Tailspin Farm on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm quite active, mainly on Instagram right now. Um, it's just the platform that I prefer. And um, also here at the channel. So thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go create something.